Alright guys, how are you doing? Uh, sorry for the enormous delay there has been since the last video, I've been a very very busy bee. But now I'm back, so I'm gonna get straight in there with this one. Uh, just a quick tutorial about how to draw text, uh, something a lot of people are interested in, how do you do things like dialogue or signs or stuff like that. Um, lots of different uses for drawing text in games, as you might imagine. Um, so I'm just going to show you in this tutorial the very basics of drawing text um, from the context of a signpost in our platformer game that when you walk over it, we'll just show you some text. And from there I might do a more in-depth tutorial later on on how you can do all sorts of different fancy things with text. But for now we're just going to cover the basics. So the first thing we've got set up here is uh, I've put a little signpost in the room. It doesn't really do much at the moment. Um, SPR underscore sign is my sprite, uh, and OBJ underscore signpost is my object. And other than give it that sprite, I've only set up two little events here, which are fairly simple things based on stuff we've done before. Um, in the create event, I've set show text to equal zero. Uh, what show text is is it's just going to be a variable we're going to use to see whether or not our player is stood on the signpost and if our player is stood on the signpost we're gonna make this one and whenever we're not stood on the signpost we're gonna make this zero and obviously we're not stood on it at the start so we're gonna start off with it being zero and then later on we'll check to see what whether or not that thing is one or zero and depending on whether it's one or zero so whether or not we're stood on the sign uh, we will show its text we'll show the signpost text so in our step event, we work out exactly that. We say, if uh, place underscore meeting x, y, obj underscore player, uh, then I, if you don't know how things like if statements work at this point, I suggest you go back to um, some of my older tutorials, uh, like my basic movement, GML tutorial, and stuff like that, that explains uh, the, the basics of how these uh, statements work. But, you know, I'll just explain what this logic is doing. Uh, we're just, you know... Uh, checking uh, our sprite's hitbox at its at its current coordinates to see if uh, our object is colliding with our player object, and if it is, then the stuff in here happens, which is show text will equal one. Else, so stretch that back. Else, so if we're not meeting uh, meeting our player object, then we just set show text to equal zero. Simple as that. It's exactly what I've just explained. So if we stand on the sign, show text is 1. If we're not stood on the sign, show text is 0. So now we know whether or not we're stood on the sign at any point. We just need to say uh, to draw the text when we are. So what we're going to do for this, and what you do for all sort of uh, drawing code, like all drawing GMLs, you have to do it in the draw event. Uh, it's a special event. works similar to the step event in that it happens every single frame. Uh, it happens pretty much at the end of every frame. Uh, whereby this is the point where after doing all your calculations your objects and your sprites and stuff are all actually drawn to the screen or your backgrounds and stuff like that are drawn in order depending on what their depth is and so on and so forth. Um, so by default if you don't set a draw event every object technically has one and it'll just draw itself. It'll draw itself at whatever frame of animation it's supposed to be at so far and so on. But if you create a draw event and uh, if I just put in some code here and I just like put an empty comment in, so nothing in the in the draw event, what will happen now if I run the game is you'll notice the signpost has disappeared entirely because uh, because basically uh, in our draw event we're telling the object to do absolutely nothing. Whereas before when we didn't have this draw event, uh, the um, the object would draw itself by default. But we're overriding our default draw event by creating one ourselves. So in order to still draw the um, the signpost, we need to type draw hmm? draw underscore self open bracket close bracket semicolon if you want, and then what that'll do is exactly what it says. It'll just draw itself. So if you don't want to completely override all the drawing events and you don't want to manually draw your sprite and stuff in the draw step, then just say, you know, draw underscore self and it'll it'll do its standard thing and it'll draw itself. You know, we can see that now actually if I hit F5. See again, yeah, the signpost is back. So now we're drawing ourselves again, but you know, just back where we started really. So now what we want to see is uh, if we're stood on the sign, show some text. So I'm going to say if uh, what was it? Show text, I think. Yeah, show text equals equals one. Uh, open brace, close brace. 
Then I'm going to say draw underscore text. Very, very simple command. Uh, x to so at the x coordinate we're at currently. Uh, y minus 64. So we're going to show the text a little bit above the signpost. You know, you could do whatever you want with these two coordinates. If I wanted to draw it in a, like in the top left corner of the screen, for example, I could just do something like 10, 10, or even 0, 0, or like uh, a little bit deeper into the screen, like 100, 100. You know, do whatever you want with those. But I'm just going to use the x coordinate of the sign, the y coordinate of the sign, minus 64, so a little bit above the sign. And then comma, and then the very last argument you put in this is the string that you want to draw. When you're putting a string in here, you have to use uh, uh, quotation marks like that, and you can tell when the stuff in it goes red as opposed to being grey like that. Um, so what our string is going to be, a uh, string just being like a, a piece of like alphanumeric text um, in your game. So I'm going to just say hi, uh, exclamation mark, and I'm going to put a hash here, and I'll explain that in a second. This, um, actually no space there. This is a string, and end of the quotation mark like that. Um, and what that hash will do, um, when you put a hash in a string like that when you're drawing text, it'll uh, create a new line. Um, so it'll create a line break. So hopefully now, and because, uh, like I say, the draw step happens every frame. So by default, we're drawing ourselves, and if show text is one, then it will draw the, draw this text. If show text is not one, then it won't draw this text, and therefore when the screen is refreshed, the text will go away anyway. So we don't need to write like an else don't draw text type thing. We don't need to do something like that, because it will get rid of itself when it refreshes the frame. So now, hopefully, if I had come up here and I walk under this, you can see the text up there. Hi! And then my line break, created by the hash. Uh, this is a string. Now the text looks ugly as ugly. So <laughs> that's because it's using like a, def like a default font. Um, not using any kind of like custom font or anything, and um, it's not properly aligned. The default alignment is just left aligned. You can see it like it's coming from like dead in the center of the signpost, like here, and then just aligned uh, aligned left like that. So it looks a little bit ugly. So I mean, now you know how to actually draw the text, but uh, I'm just going to take a moment now to just to show you how you know you can present that a little bit better. So the first thing we're going to do is just set up a font. So if we go to fonts here and go to create font. Uh, what font am I going to use? I'm just going to use this little nice pixel font I like using. Uh, same naming conventions as standard. I'm going to use FNT for font. That's my three letter acronym of choice. Uh, and just default. That'll do. Um, down here as well, you can also use like the, these buttons and these options to set a font range. Which means like if you say you're doing a score or something and you're only ever going to use the numbers, you can restrict the font to only being the numbers. Uh, which is helpful because um, when you make fonts, it embeds the entire font into your game. Um, and like in HTML5, that comes out as like a big texture sheet, which can you know it can use a lot of memory. So don't use too many fonts with like a million characters in them uh, in your game. Try and you know limit your use of fonts wherever you can, um, or at least you know limit the amount of characters you're using to just the ones that you actually need. Like if you don't need like. Uh, all these random symbols and stuff, you know, just take them out, just use like alphanumeric and stuff. Again, all these little options down here you can use to, to change the, the range of uh, characters in your font. But yeah, we're just going to use this font. So now that we've got that font set up, uh, what we need to do is tell our signpost to actually use that font when it's drawing the text. So if we come back into our draw event, I'm just going to say draw underscore set font uh, FNT underscore default, semicolon. You can tell that's the, the right name of the font because it turned red. And then hopefully, when we go into the game, come up to our signpost. Hi, this is a string, and it's in a nice new font. It's properly spaced and all that. It's still badly aligned. It's using like a, a horizontal alignment, uh, the, le the left alignment, even. So let's fix that now. What we can do is come into here and say draw set uh, h align um, f a underscore center. Um, so what that'll do is it'll just set the, the horizontal alignment of our drawing tool to be centered. And so every text we draw after setting that will be centered. Um, another thing I'm going to do, uh, and that's just like a constant, if you can type in like uh, fa left and fa right, 
and, um, and so on to do the different uh, horizontal alignments. You can also do vertical alignments, so you can do like draw set, V align, and like FA middle, and then top and bottom, and, and so on in the same way. Uh, all those things are, are listed in F1. If you just press F1 and you know go to draw set H line, uh, you'll find these constants here, and they'll show you. It'll show you with diagrams there how it works. Um, so that should no, we don't want it to be right. We want it to be centered, right? Okay, cool. And so that will now center off on, and we're also going to set the color. So I'm going to say draw set color, and we're going to say F. A under no, we're not F A C underscore white. Um, that's going to set the uh, color of our drawing tool to be white. Um, again, this is just a constant. If you look up this in F one, you can find all this. Um, you can find like C white and C blue and all the other different constants you can use for colors um, in the help menu. You don't have to use a constant for a color. You can use things like make a uh, color. RGB is a function that will make a color out of a red, green, and blue value. So I could do something like 200, um, 0, 200, and probably get like a purple kind of color. Um, again, that's just a, as, as legitimate as putting in like C underscore white. And you can use a HSV as well, like hue, saturation, value, make color HSV um, to do colors that way. But uh, I'm just going to use this little purpley color and I'm going to center the font. Uh, another thing we're going to do is, just uh, as a point of example, is I'm going to tell the object to draw a rectangle, um, just bear with me a second, at 10, uh, 10, 20, 20, 0. Um, that's just, I'm just going to draw like a black rectangle in the upper left of the screen, and I want you to see what happens uh, when I, and that's just going to happen every frame, regardless of whether I'm stood on the signpost. But I want you to see what happens when I stand on the signpost, because it'll be a little bit interesting. So now you can see in this top left corner, I've got this little black rectangle, because my default draw color is black. So um, it's drawing a black rectangle up there. Now when I come over to this sign, uh, you can see it's got this kind of purpley color you're using to draw the, the string, um, you know, as expected. But as you can see, the rectangle has also turned this pinky color. Now that kind of makes sense, because we set our, our color in here to be this purple color, uh, while, you know, show text equals one. But if you'll notice if I come off of the signpost, the, the box is still pink, uh, or purple, or whatever. And that's because, basically, once you set that color, um, it stays that way until you set it again. So if you're doing any other kind of drawing thing, um, it's gonna use whatever your color was set to last. So make sure, like, um, you always set your color just before you, you, you draw any or draw anything that's actually going to use that color thing, otherwise it's just going to use the color you used last time. So just make sure you always you know, have that color that's not there. Um, so I'm not going to actually draw it in, in purple though. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this in black, which is the default color. I'm going to get rid of this rectangle now though. And what I'm going to do after that is I'm actually going to do a cute little trick a lot of people like to use with like pixel fonts and stuff is uh, this first one I'm gonna uh, so I'm gonna copy and paste this so I'm, I'm basically drawing the text over the top of itself twice if I did this you wouldn't notice a thing because it would just be drawing the same thing twice it'd be totally obsolete and pointless uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this one to be drawn at x plus 1 and y minus 64 plus 1 I could say my minus 63 but it's easier to see what I'm doing if you just see the, the 1 the, the plus 1 and it's equally as valid so uh, and then I'm going to set this one to be C underscore white. Now what I'm hoping this will do is it'll draw this black text um, with like a one pixel down and right offset, and it'll draw a white text over the top of it uh, without the offset, which means that hopefully it'll draw, it'll create this cute little like shadow effect. If I come over here, yeah, it's kind of hard to see. Um, I'll probably zoom in or something here, but like uh, we've got this neat little shadow effect going on in our, our text now which is pretty cool. Um, other things you can do is I can set uh, the like the alpha or the transparency to be like draw set alpha um, 0.5. So that would half the transparency of the text. But 
uh, draw stat alpha works in very much the same way that uh, draw text does. In fact, it works like on everything. Like when you set your draw alpha, it's going to affect everything that has an alpha property. So like all of these objects now that I've stood on this have turned like 0.5, like 50% transparency, uh, including the text. And it doesn't go away when I leave it because uh, I've nothing that's resetting the alpha ever again. So make sure when you change the alpha, you always change it back after you're done with it. So it always like change it back to one when you're done with it, just to avoid any problems like that. Which we want to here anyway by default, because we want to draw the, 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 the non-transparent text over the top. But generally, like if I was stopping there and I just wanted some like 50% uh, transparent text, I would always have this draw set alpha one line afterwards, even if I wasn't drawing this white on top, just so that it doesn't screw everything else back up. As you can see, that's to create that with a neat little semi transparent shadow effect going on behind it. And yeah, there you go, basically, that's more or less um, uh, some simple tips and tricks in terms of drawing text. Uh, there's all sorts of different fancy things you can do in terms of like drawing text, like one letter at a time and stuff like that. But that requires going a bit more in depth and sort of coming up with your own creative solutions and things. Technically, I've already given you throughout my tutorials the things you know to be able to theoretically do that sort of thing. But um, that is a bit more complicated, and I might have another tutorial that goes in depth on showing fancy ways of like displaying dialogue and, and stuff like that. Um, but that should be all you need to get started with drawing text and stuff. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that was useful for you all, and I will catch you next time. See you guys. Thanks for watching.